Greetings and welcome to this instructional video for installing HBase using Amazon Elastic MapReduce. Before we get started, there's a few things that we're going to need to take care of. First of all, you're going to need an SSH client. Putty is a really good choice. It's very popular and easy to configure. I uh, have the URL here where you can find Putty mostly because it's kind of a strange URL and I don't want you to be freaked out if you Google it and, uh, and can't find a better source than this, but this is the URL that you use to get Putty. Another option is SSH, uh, but the private key authentication that we're going to be talking about is going to have to be configured a little bit differently and will be beyond the scope of this video. So either of these or another SSH client will be fine, but PuTTY is going to be the easiest to kind of follow along this video with. The second thing we're going to talk about is we're going to need to generate an AWS key pair in EC2. And when we do this, you're going to download a private key, which you're going to need to store in a safe place because it's essentially going to be like your password for accessing your servers in AWS. And then the final thing to note is that unlike the RDS configuration we went through in a previous video, there is no completely free way to configure HBase using EMR. Now, I think I have found the most uh, economical setup and it's going to cost about 13 cents per hour. Now, again, remember going through this process is completely optional. It's up to you. Uh, the 13 cents an hour that works out to about $3 a day, which would work out to about $100 over the course of a month if you left it up and running. So my suggestion to you would be to carefully choose the cheapest options and then leave this up and running for maybe just an hour or two, you know, spend a dollar on this to get the experience and then shut it down and you can connect to the uh, larger uh, EMR cluster that we're going to be using for class for doing most of your work. Now, a couple of points to consider. Uh, one, you can install Hadoop and HDFS and HBase just on normal Linux servers, but I started going through this process for you guys and, and was going to have you do this, but the configuration and the management is quite in depth and really beyond the scope of this class. So Amazon Elastic MapReduce makes this tremendously easier. However, that's not also without its downside, primarily being that EMR is kind of ephemeral in nature, meaning that when we shut down our EMR cluster, anything that's stored in that cluster, unless we take some special precautions for this not to be the case, is going to be destroyed. So uh, there are things we can do like storing our data into S3 buckets that are separate from the EMR cluster. But then again, that's getting into some, some configuration that's above and beyond the scope of what we're covering in this database course. And we're not really trying to set up a, a long running production database environment here. Uh, really in this video, we're just uh, looking at uh, kind of the basic configuration and giving you guys a little bit of exposure to how this might be set up in a cloud environment. So with that, let's go to aws.amazon.com and get started. So like before, if you haven't created an AWS account yet, you'll need to go ahead and do that. And AWS is going to ask you for a credit card to do this. So uh, you know, there's the option that if, or there's the possibility that if you choose some of the wrong options, you may incur some charges or some charges above and beyond the 13 cents per hour that I've uh, said, I think we can pull this off for. So just be wary of that and be kind of careful about what you're getting into. So I'm going to click the button to sign in to the console. And we're going to start by generating our key pair that we're going to use for authentication. So I'm going to click on EC2 to do that. And note that I'm going to be blurring out some of the details on my screen just uh, for the sake of kind of securing the environment that we are setting up here. But once you get into EC2, scroll down to where you see key pairs in the network and security group. We're going to click on that. And uh, I have a key pair here that I'm using for the, uh, the servers for our class but you probably don't have anything here right now. So you're gonna click on this orange button that says create key pair. 
And uh, I'm gonna suggest that you create a key pair with a PPK extension. If you're using OpenSSH, you'll need the PEM uh, format, but come up with whatever name you want for your key pair. Uh, in this case, I'm just gonna call this EMR demo and click the orange button that says create key pair. And when you do that, notice that you, your browser is going to download the emrdemo.ppk file. Now, I would suggest going to your downloaded items and then copying that somewhere safe and somewhere that you will be able to uh, access it in the future because this is effectively your password for connecting to your EC2 servers now. So you should protect it just like you would a password. All right, so now that we are done in EC2, we're gonna go back up to services and under the analytics uh, section, we're going to click on EMR for Elastic MapReduce. So I currently have some stuff up and running here. Again, you probably don't have anything here yet. So to create your first EMR cluster, click on this blue button that says Create Cluster. Okay, you can give this any name you want. I'm gonna call it uh, EMR HBase Demo. Uh, just leave all of this the same. We're gonna use the 5.3 release of EMR, and we have a few options we can select from here as to what we would like installed in our EMR cluster. And for this, we need to select the second option here because it includes HBase, which is what we are the most interested in right now. Now, to minimize your cost, it's very important that we change our hardware configuration here. So the two things you need to do from the dropdown list, instead of an M5.extra large, select the M4 large. Okay, that's the cheapest of all of the instance types. And then instead of three instances in the cluster, we're just going to change that to one. Now, we've said before that a production HBase cluster generally needs to have at least five nodes, but for just playing around with, we can get by with one. Now, to authenticate, we're going to use our EC2 key pair that we just created. So, in the drop down list, select uh, the name that you gave to that key pair you just generated. In this case, it's EMR demo, and then click create cluster. Now, as you watch this screen, you'll see your cluster go through quite a few different stages. And uh, this takes a little bit longer than our, e uh, than our RDS configuration took. Uh, expect this to be maybe 10 to 15 minutes. If you provision more than just the one node in the cluster, it's going to take longer than that because there is some additional time for each node that's uh, being created. So at this point, we're just going to wait for the 10 or 15 minutes, and when this is done, we'll come back and finish the configuration and connect using PuTTY. All right, and we are back, and after about 11 minutes, our new EMR cluster is in a state of running. So we should be able to connect to this now. I'm gonna go ahead and click on it, and we'll be back to this details screen. And uh, one of the most important details I'll point out is the master public DNS address. So this is what we are going to use to connect to our EMR cluster. So I'm gonna highlight that and control C to copy, or you can just click on this little uh, icon here and that will copy it to your clipboard as well. And we're going to connect using SSH with the PuTTY client. So I'm gonna zoom in so we can see just a little bit better here. But when we open up PuTTY, this is the connection screen. So I'm going to paste the uh, DNS name of our EMR cluster. And then one really important thing that we have to do because we're not connecting to this cluster using a username and password, we're actually using the private key pair that we generated earlier. So on this uh, window or this pane on the left-hand side, go down to SSH off and then there is a spot here for private key file for authentication. You want to click on browse and then navigate to the PPK file that you generated uh, in AWS. 
click open. Okay, so now you're going to authenticate using this key file and we are authenticating to our EMR uh, cluster. So we're gonna click open to start the connection. Now, when you do this, you'll get an alert pop up that say that says the uh, server's host key is not cached in the registry. Just kind of a warning message you need to click yes to. And then you'll be prompted with login as. And the username that you are logging in with is ec2-user. And then Putty is going to use the private key in that file as your password. So when you hit enter, it authenticates you. And now you're connected to your EMR cluster. Okay, and this is, uh, we have HBase running, and so we can uh, connect to HBase just like we did in some of our other videos by typing HBase shell. And wait just a moment for the client to connect. And here we are in HBase type version and see that we're HBase version 1.4.13. We could, uh, you know, create a customers table with column families of uh, details and uh, relatives and accounts. I think that's what we had in our last uh, last example. Now you see we have a table created there. We can put into customers 101 details name mark. And scan customers. So just that quick and easy, we have an HBase server up and running in EMR. When you're ready to be done interacting with the uh, HBase, you can type exit to close out of HBase and then exit again to actually disconnect from the EMR cluster. Now, a few other things I would like to point out here. Uh, one, this screen in EMR with all of the information about your EMR cluster, you see here at the bottom, you see uh, security groups for master and security groups for core and task. Now, very similar to how we had to change some firewall settings to connect to our RDS instance, if we click on this, we'll be taken to some firewall rules about our EMR cluster. And one thing I will point out is that these firewall rules are automatically created to allow only your IP address to connect to the cluster. So if you were to set this up at home and then go to someone else's house or go to school or go to your office, you're going to have a different IP address and you won't be able to connect to your EMR cluster. So you might need to go in here and adjust your firewall rules if that happens, but you're probably not going to be leaving this EMR cluster up for a very long time. Uh, so, you know, probably this isn't something to be too concerned about, but uh, just so you know, that's there. Another thing that I will point out is that unlike our RDS installation, which was kind of serverless computing, uh, when you created this EMR cluster, it actually did install servers inside EC2. So we're currently in the EC2 dashboard. And if we look at our instances, you'll find that uh, you have a running EC2 instance for each node in your EMR cluster, okay? Another thing I will point out is that we have some services available above and beyond just the ability to connect to the cluster via SSH and, uh, and the HBase shell. Uh, for example, if we paste the URL of our EMR cluster and go to port 8088, we have some metrics about our installation of Hadoop. So in this case, we have only one active node, but if we have more than one node, we can see some interesting things here about how uh, tasks are being distributed amongst nodes. Uh, there's another Hadoop management port that can give you other interesting information at 570. So you might wanna just kind of click around there a little bit and see, see what's going on. And then the final service that I would uh, call your attention to resides on port 8888, 
which is Hue, which is a software package that you can use to uh, write SQL queries and uh, HQL queries and interact with Hadoop and HBase in a lot of different ways. So we'll have some examples of using this in class in the future. Now, when you're done with your EMR cluster, just go back to AWS, make sure you're in the EMR service. And when you're ready to get rid of this, so you're not going to pay for it anymore, just click the checkbox next to your cluster and click this terminate button. And when you do this, it's going to warn you, are you sure you want to terminate this cluster? Uh, any pending work or any data that is residing on the cluster will be lost. Anything that is stored in your HDFS repository is going to be lost and this is irreversible. Okay, so we haven't walked through how we could store our data in an S3 bucket or anything like that. So again, this is ephemeral in nature and once we shut this down, it's going to be gone and gone forever. But that's what we want right now, so we're not spending money on it. So I'm going to click terminate. And now the EMR cluster is gone. So that's it for this tutorial on installing HBase using Amazon EMR. I hope you enjoyed it. Go forth and do great things.